It's in chronic. These are extremely time sensitive con conditions and the biggest challenge that we, we do face is the, the time delay from onset of symptoms to people actually seeking medical attention right. because of a lack of education regarding this topic. Uh, for stroke patients, there's a very simple acronym. It's called FAST. Uh, F for face, looking for facial droop on the one side. Everyone's quite familiar with this. Right. The A is for arm. CFA is weakness in the one arm. When you compare left and right. S for speech. Uh, list, ask the, patient, uh, the person to say something. Listen for if there's any slurring. And then T is just emphasizing time again, how time critical these are. Okay, so F, face. So you need to be looking out for? Facial droop. So you look okay. for either the left or the right side and you'll see, facial quite, you'll see it quite clearly. So it's quite n uh, noticeable. Yes. Okay. And then you said A is for arm. Arm. So it's arm drift or you can compare strength from the left to the right arm. Right. And then S you, is speech, so you want them to say something, you right? You ask them to say anything. Um, Where are you? What's your yes. name? Yes. And you'll, and you'll hear a clear slurring of words. Okay, and then obviously T is time, which is important. Time. So should a person present with FAS, um, should it be all of it, or could it be you know one or two of the three? That's a very good question. We actually, people don't always present with all these symptoms. Uh, it depends on where, what the location of the clot is that's obviously causing the, the stroke. Mm -hmm. And the more subtle ones sometimes will only present with one or two of these, one or two of these signs. But again, if you, if you forget about these things, there's always someone with a phone around. Everyone's got Google, mm. and I'll probably refer to it again and again to have to be unsure, Google it. Okay. Um, so let's say someone is presenting you know, with a facial droop, uh, you try to get them to speak and they slurred, and you're thinking, well, okay, the person's having a stroke. Uh, obviously, reach out for someone to call for medical assistance would be one of the first things you do. Yeah, that's correct. Once that is done, in the few minutes between paramedics arriving on scene, what should you do? And I mean, obviously, don't walk away because the person needs your help, right? That's correct, yeah. Stay with the person, always keep it online with the paramedics to make sure that they know exactly where you are. Um, and she's the advice going forward, it also depends on where you are. If you're right across the road from a hospital, don't phone an ambulance and wait 20 minutes for the ambulance to arrive, if, if that's the case. It might be easier just to put them in the car and get them across the road to the, to the hospital. But stay with, with the patient, uh, keep talking to him, and yeah, that's about it. The patient's on the floor, keep them lying down, you know, turn them seated. Yeah. If what, the patient collapses and is unable to sit up by himself, turn him laterally. Uh, the reason for that is always just to keep the airway open. Mm. If the patient does vomit, so it doesn't go back into the airway. Okay. And if 